Oh, welcome to the video tutorial for this old film recording. It looks like this. Nice, you still have buttons here on the side, so it looks like that. Uh, and the back has the same. For this cardigan, you'll need a measuring tape, a couple of stitch markers, a darning needle, a 5mm or H8 crochet hook, and I'm using this uh, Tweedle Light from Hobby. But any uh, arrow worsted weight yarn that matches gauge should be fine to use. This pattern will be uh, told and, writ and is written using US crochet terminology. I'll be making this in size small. Uh, you can find all the different numbers for the different sizes on my website at coffeeandcrocheting.com. I'll start by leaving a long tail for sewing the side. And then we'll begin with our starting chains. So I'll make a loop. I'll just cross over the yarn, insert my fingers, pull through the loop, and then pull on both of the sides. So now we have our starting loop, insert the hook, and we're ready to begin with our chains. For a size small, we'll make 59 chains. So we yarn over. Pull through the loop on the hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on the hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on the hook. Now we have 59 chains. So we are beginning with the back section. So this is our 59 chains for the back section. Uh, the whole body piece will be worked in one, one piece, so starting from back and then splitting to front. So for our first row, we will make, uh, we will be working in the third chain from the hook, that's this one. And we will be working in the back loops, so I'm turning the chains. So now we have the back loops here, it's that one there, or back bumps, so you see them from the side that it's a bump like that. So. It's here, we will insert our hook just under that back bump. So we will have it like that, just one. Uh, this cardigan will be made using the herringbone half double crochet. So to make that we yarn over, insert the hook in the back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through the first loop on the hook, yarn over, pull through one loop, Yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. And again. Yarn over, insert the hook in the back bump. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Pull through the first loop on the hook. Yarn over, pull through one of the loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. So they look like this. I'll show you once more, we yarn over, insert the hook in the back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through one of the loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through one of the loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both of the loops on the hook. So we now have three stitches. So let's continue across the row. And now we reach our final chain of the row, so then we end with the, the same stitch, so a herringbone half double crochet. And then we chain two and turn. We should now have 57 herringbone half double crochet, so you can double check that you have the correct amount. And that's if you make a size small. For our row two, we insert we yarn over, insert the hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
pull through till upp och luft. Ja, no, pull through one of the loops and up. Ja, no, pull through both loops and up. And continue like that across. So we insert or hook in that under those both E loops there. So it's like there. And then we just continue to repeat row two for the whole back section. And then we'll split to the front and I'll meet you back there. So we have now completed the back section and are ready to split for the fronts. So we have our working yarn here and we put the stitch marker in the 26th stitch from each edge. So from each edge. And we'll just simply continue to make our stitch all the way through the stitch mark. And when you reach the stitch mark, you just make the final stitch in the stitch with the stitch mark. And then chain two and turn. And you, then you just continue to work this shorter row for your front until your front section is as long as your back section. For your second front, you make a slip knot, attach your hook, and then you attach your yarn here in the stitch with the second stitch mark. Yarn over, pull through, chain one, and then you continue making herring bone half double crochet across the middle. So you just continue like that. And then all the way across, chain two in the end, and then make this second front as long as the first front, which is as long as the back section. So when you made the full body piece and the front section, you fold the front sections over the back. So they are just folded like this over the back from here from the shoulder. So it's just folded over like this. And then I usually place stitch markers uh, where the sleeve will begin. So I measure from the shoulder and down uh, half of the width of the sleeve. So I know that mine will be 36 centimeters wide. So I measured 18 centimeters down. Four inches, please see the pattern. And then we'll just start to seam from from the bottom up until the stitch mark and I will seam using the VIP stitch on this card again but you, you can use any stitch that you feel most comfortable with so I, I used the end I left here in the beginning I begin by going through the other side, so we've I've gone through both of the sides. And now I will begin with the VIP stitch that I do by going back to this first side. And then over to that. And then again from this same side. Over to that. And 
this gives a neat seam that you can hardly see. On some projects the whip stitch might be a bit too bulky then I recommend the mattress stitch but uh, since this carding in in itself with using this yarn is a bit like rough then I, I like the look of the whip stitch and it's a lot faster to make than the mattress stitch since you go through both sides at, at the same time. Try to make it as even as possible and quite have the stitches quite close to each other so, so it won't leave any gaps. And then just continue to seam all the way up to the, to the stitch mark and repeat the same on the other side from here up to the stitch mark. To make our ribbing or edge we'll attach our yarn here in the middle of the back piece. So I just uh, insert my hook in the middle stitch here and attach the yarn. And then we'll make a single crochet in the next stitch, and one in the next, and one in the next. And then when we then we when we reach the front, we can turn the full piece so that we now work on the front. And here we will make single crochets. We try to get them as evenly as possible. It will be one to two single crochets per row. So when you see that it kind of lays flat like this, you know that you have an even amount, even amount or like good amount. If it pulls or, or if it starts to wiggle like this, uh, then you have too many stitches and or if this garment starts to pull then you have too few stitches but if it just lays flat like this you have a good amount i try to change by placing them uh, nearer each other or further apart or you can also change the hook size to adjust uh, adjust the width between them uh, then just continue to make single crochet all the way down here and when you arrive here, you just continue and all the way around the back here, up, and then continue up until you reach the beginning there again. There you will join to the first stitch and then turn and then continue all the way around for next next row. And that will be granite stitches and continue to make granite stitches until you, your ribbing is at your preferred width. To make the sleeve, uh, I will first begin by uh, using leaving a long tail to, to sew the sleeve. Probably around 1 meter or 40 inches is a good length. Then I make a slip knot and attach my, my yarn. And then for size S we'll chain 31. So 31 machines here and we'll continue to work in the back bumps. The back bumps were those here that when you have your chain with your V here you just turn it and there you have your back bumps. So we'll crochet in the third back bump so that's one two three. So we'll make a single crochet here and then chain one. And then we'll skip next chain and, and go under in the back bump. So we insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. And then chain one, skip next chain, go on and then insert our hook, make a single crochet. And then chain one. So we'll continue that across so in the final chain. Make the same so as 
single crochet in the final chain and then chain one and turn and for the next row we'll be working in the chain spaces we've made on the previous row so there we have our first single crochet then we have a chain space then a single crochet and you can see the chain spaces by opening up like that so then we'll insert our hook in the chain space yarn over up and through so we make a single crochet then we chain one insert the hook in next chain space single crochet chain one insert the hook in the next chain space single crochet chain one this single crochet chain one is called the granite stitch and it's what we use in the pattern to the name we just continue across inserting our hook in the chain space and making a granite stitch I'll show you here in the end it can be a bit tricky to find where to put put the final stitch so then I insert my hook as far away as possible to try to find the chains I skipped in the beginning so they are here that's one chain two chain so that's one chain two chain and there I make our final single crochet after row row it's just here on the second row that's hard then on the other ones you just simply put it uh, here on the outside after the final single crochet so there you insert your hook to make it for then the final rows later on and then to begin the next row you just again insert in the chain space so you skip the first single crochet and insert in the chain space and then as mentioned the final stitch of the row is after the this single crochet so you insert your hook here and there you make the final final single crochet after all continue until you have eight rows of granite stitch so here we have our rows of granite stitches for the ribbing of the sleeve and then we'll continue to make our uh, herringbone stitches again uh, and we'll make that so we'll make two in the first stitch, then one, then two, and then one, and repeat across row. So we insert the hook here in the first stitch, make our herringbone, and then insert the hook again in the same stitch and make our herringbone stitch. Then we go to the next stitch, which is the chain space, and make a herringbone, and then the next and then in the same again so we always make it's actually so we always make two herringbone stitches when we rest in a single crochet and then one in the chain space and just continue like that across the row we end our row in the final stitch then chain two and then just continue with herringbone stitch across the row for row two with just one one stitch in every stitch and then just repeat that until your sleeve is at your preferred length so we have the full sleeve here so when you made it it looks like this and then you just simply fold it in half lengthwise and then we'll start to seam the sides and uh, here is the end I left in the beginning so I used that to seam I have left a bit of extra here in the end to attach the sleeve uh, to the sweater but yeah let's start to seam it and I'll seam this using this uh, VIP stitch so for the first Stitch. I just simply go under on the other side so I have the yarn one way fully through and then I have a look that I have both sides like this and then simply go from this side over
So I say in the beginning when you have a long yarn piece that it can easily tangle. But then again over from the same side as always from that side to this. Put yarn on the side so it doesn't tangle. And then just continue like that, all the way, so always from this side. So that gives a neat seam that you hardly can see. And continue all the way up here. And then we'll attach the sleeve to the sweater. To attach the sleeve, uh, you place it here next to the sleeve opening. And then just simply whip stitch around. So first I make a stitch on the cardigan to kind of attach it and then I start the whip stitches. Just continue to do like that all the way around, also on the back until you're back here. Uh, so I decided that I actually want buttons on this cardigan. So if you want, you can add buttons. Uh, I haven't made specific button holes, but I hope I'll be able to thread the button through these chain spaces that we have here on our ribbing. I think I think they will work work fine too use as buttonholes. Uh, so I just placed out the buttons approximately where I want them and see that they are approximately the same same stitches between them and then I just simply put a stitch marker here in the bottom of all the buttons you can place it where you want but just remember where. So I put it under where I want the button. I don't know where I want it to stop. And now I'm ready to remove my other buttons and start with the attaching. So then I have a thread and a sewing needle. Uh, I use a black yarn now because I have some black, I didn't have that many options and I have black details in this yarn here so I think that will work fine. So then I just simply hold my button and then start to seam. I just go over and under a few times to attach it. I always do like that, that I leave an end here and then I can make a knot of both of the ends. And I usually use the thread like double. But now I have quite a good amount. I cut off my yarn. And then I simply just Make a knot of the two ends I have. I usually make three. Then I attach all the other buttons and check the firmability of the buttons and then I just cut these off. But that's how to attach a button and then repeat for all of them. <laughs> 